today we're going to watch the most popular show in New Jersey history for New Jerseyans. Oh. You know what it is. It's The Sopranos. How you doing? You know, some of it's filmed in my own town here in Booton. Booton, New Jersey. Yeah. Oh, rim shot. <laughs> so we're going to watch The Sopranos, and I'm going to give you my reactions. There are things you can take from all these different movies, TV shows, video clips that can transform your business if you look at the inside kind of insider tips. Now, here's the deal. Hit that notification bell and hit the subscribe button on YouTube. I'll shift over here so I can give you my feedback and let's let Tony Soprano roll. I like the meeting. I want to know what a zero growth in this family's receipts. There's no fucking money. You're supposed to be earners. That's why you got the top tier positions. So each one of you go out to your people on the street, crack some fucking heads, create some fucking earners out there. The guy. We talked about this over at the other place with the guy, the councilman. What the fuck happened to that? It peed it out. It peed it out. It died on the vine. It died on the vine. Pause it right here. Died on the vine. Um, so one of the criticisms I want to offer, and maybe it works for the mobsters, but in a more, let's say, traditional business, uh, public humiliation or uh, public accusations and reprim reprimandation, rep reprimanding <laughs> is not effective. You correct privately, you award publicly. So a situation like this, ideally you meet with each person individually and say, what's going on? We got to fix this. And then once, uh, once you have a dialogue around it, then um, as a group, you come together and you can do almost a rah-rah speech. We got to get back out there and let's do this. So I don't know if this format's the right way for a traditional business. Let's see how it goes. He died on the vine, the guy, he moved or something. Oh, nobody knows what the I'm talking about. We hear you, Tom. My uncle, the boss of his family, is on trial for his life. And what you people are kicking up to him is a fucking disgrace. You know, you know how much lawyers cost? A major rico like his? I'm the only one supporting them. This thing is a pyramid since time immemorial. Shit runs downhill, money goes up. It's that simple. I should not have to be coming here, hat in my hand, reminding you about your duty to that man. And I don't want to hear about the fucking economy either. I don't want to hear it. I got to pause right there. I don't want to hear about the economy. I don't want to hear about the effing economy. You know what? I'm kind of with him. So let me tell you a little secret about small business. Um, you can choose not to participate in the economy. Now, now hear me out here before you get all of them up in my face. Let me tell you uh, about this. Is say businesses lose about 10% of their business or clientele in a down economy. Well, if you're a small business and you have 100 customers, that's 10 customers. If you're a big business, you have you know 100,000 customers, 10% 10, 10 is 10,000 customers. That impact is significant. What we can do as small businesses say, yeah, I lost 10 customers, but there's 10,000 other customers out there. Now they've entered the market and I can grab some of that opportunity. Maybe some of them stop buying, but many <clears throat> customers who are in the position still to buy will use trans, uh, uh, tr situations like this. I was about to say transformational times, but just when, when things happen, when, when uh, the economy slips, they say, you know what? I never really liked this vendor in the first place. Let me go elsewhere and look. They're changing their prices. They're doing this. They, they jump. These were clients that were always on the fence. So I have 10,000 customers entering the market, a portion of them say 1,000 are kind of on the fence and looking for someone else. Well, instead of looking at those 10 people you lost, let's look at the 1,000 people you can gain. So I kind of agree with Tony here. The economy, don't, don't tell me it's the economy. You have a choice as a small business to focus your attention, you can get 10 or more clients, even though you lost 10 or more clients. So, break it down for them. 
What two businesses have traditionally been recession proof since time immemorial? I'm going I'm to pause right here. What's been recession proof? I, if the mob has conversations like that, I love it. Uh, because there are common things. Um, alcohol, drugs, vice, like, uh, I, I don't know if there are things like strip clubs or something. Um, but those outlets, typically, people keep going. And sometimes even amplify that. Illegal things like prostitution and so forth. Amplify when people are in uh, extreme, in a depressed state. So that maybe what they're referring to, but there are recession-proof businesses, and there's legal ones. Certain aspects of show business and our thing. Now that's it. That's all I gotta say. So uh, all right, let's go on to another clip. So that was some strategy about sales and leadership. Uh, some stuff I like, some stuff I didn't like. Let's see what else uh, Tony has to say. This is about so. Uh, Paulie tells me you're thinking of selling your father's business, the Chucky Janelli. Yeah, I think it's the best thing for mom. And of course, Tony, there'd be a severance package for you. Frankly, Jason, I don't think you should sell the business right now. There's a lot of potential buyers out there. Let me get out of the hospital, run the numbers, get you the best price. No, Chinelli's offer seemed fair. There's lots of things to take into account. You even know what your habit is? My what? Earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Gives the true picture of the company's profitability. Jason. You let me handle this. I don't want to see you get hurt. The cotton business is a different corporate culture. You're tired, T. We'll leave. Come on. All right. <laughs> All right, so there's some lessons on selling a business. This, uh, this young guy thinks he's got the best deal in the market. Uh, Tony knows something else. There is power in that insider access, that insider knowledge. When someone knows uh, something um, special about the market, potential buyers, uh, what's going on, what motivates other people, there's definitely an advantage to increase the value of a business. So maybe this guy, the young guy, is moving in a little jaded, and maybe Tony's got insider access that he wants to leverage. Now, again, this is a mob, so I'm sure there is some criminal motivations behind it. But I do want to invite you in your own business, should you be seeking to sell it, get multiple people interested. There's always people, humans involved. And when there's humans, there's emotion. So if there's multiple people interested in what you have to offer. It increases the valuation pretty substantially. Um, the other thing is if you have insider access, if you know what the other side wants, that is another way to increase your valuation. And the last thing I wanna share, which is kind of implied here, is there shouldn't be a rush. Don't rush to sell. That actually weakens your state. Be in a position where Hey, if you continue on, it still serves you. Because if you don't need to sell and don't want to sell, you'll get your highest valuation. All right, that's my insights today for The Real Entrepreneur. I hope you enjoyed it. Different perspective on uh, maybe a favorite show of yours because it's a favorite show in New Jersey. No matter what you do, hit that notification bell, that subscribe button, and go get yourself a Taylor Ham Egg and Cheese here in Booton. The Gabagool. You got the best. Take care.